We're going to take a look at the third saw uh, the, in our group, and this is uh, a little scroll saw, very handy. Uh, it's got a, about an 18-inch depth, so you can use a pretty big piece of material. Uh, very fine uh, blade. Um, we're going to loosen and remove the blade, and I'll let you see it. Um, it's straight out of a uh, hand jigsaw, and um, it allows you to do nice scroll work on the interior of a piece of wood without having to pierce the sides. This is the nose rib that we just uh, did on the uh, thin curve bandsaw. And I'm going to, uh, and I've drilled a hole so that we have a way of getting the blade on the inside. And I'm reinstalling the blade. I'm going to tighten up the tension. It doesn't have to be overly tight. Now you need to be sure to hold firmly to your piece of wood because if the blade gets it and you're not holding on, it'll jitter around for you. But we're going to cut out this interior uh, space. Okay, so here we've got the uh, center portion cut out rough, and we'll finish this uh, hole on the next step. Okay, one of the things that you commonly need to do in a woodworking shop with aircraft is to plane a piece of wood to dimension. Um, generally, you're not going to be able to take a large piece of wood and run it through your table saw uh, to shape. Uh, you might use the table saw to rough it out, but you're going to want a planer to give you four smooth sides. Today, I'm going to use this piece of spruce as uh, an example of an aircraft spar. This is actually uh, a cut-off piece that we had from a Curtis Jenny project. So what we're going to do is we're going to use it and another piece that we uh, cut earlier on the table saw uh, as our examples uh, illustrating the planer. Now this is a commercial 12 and a half inch Dewalt planer um, bought locally at the hardware store. Um, it does a great job. Uh, I've had it for any number of years and, and I've never had any problem. Um, you cannot force it, meaning you can't take huge cuts. Uh, if you're in a hurry, you're going to want to get a, a much larger, more powerful machine. But if you take your time, you can get very good results with this machine. Um, the things you need to know, uh, in, in the example of like the spar, we would have cut this on the bandsaw just like we showed the uh, uh, sample earlier. And so we would have bandsaw marks on uh, all four sides. So we want to remove those marks. Um, every piece of wood that we have has, of course, a grain, and the grain runs a certain way. So as the wood passes through the saw, um, I mean the planer, excuse me, you're going to want to notice uh, if the grain is lifted or not. And I will show you that. Once you know which way the uh, grain runs, you're going to mark it with your pencil and repeat to pass the uh, uh, piece of wood through in that direction only. Otherwise you're going to tear out the grain with every pass on the saw and you won't end up with four smooth sides. Um, the machine's very loud so you're going to want to wear your uh, hearing protection um, and generally you know it's going to create a lot of chips so when you're all done you'll want to vacuum them up so you don't have any chance of slipping or tripping. So um, another um, useful tool in this um, operation is an inexpensive set of calipers. Um, I call this my dummy gauge. I don't rely on the machine's height or ruler. Um, I use my um, inexpensive calipers. And so if I know what width I want my spar to be, I set the caliper at that width, and then I tighten down the verner, and it holds it. Okay. And now I know that this is the finished width we want on this spar, and I can leave this on top of the machine and check it after each pass, and I'll show you that. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the first pass on this machine. We've got um, inset rollers and outset rollers to catch uh, the piece of wood. If we were working in a situation where uh, our spar was much, much longer, like the original piece I have here uh, was 20 some odd feet long, I'd need another person to help me. 
Uh, but for this demonstration, we're just going to use this relatively short piece. Okay, so now we're going to try our first pass. Okay, what I'd like to show is, if you can look right here, I deliberately ran the piece of spruce through in the wrong direction. The first pass that we just made was perfect. It was going in the right direction. But when I turned the piece around deliberately and ran it through, we had this tear out where the grain has been pulled. The wood just passed through the machine this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to take my pencil and, and put a, an arrow on it. And that way I know uh, that it has to go through in this direction as we make consecutive passes to reduce the width of the material. We adjust the height, bringing the blade down a little bit, and we start again. Now, if we look, there isn't the tear out in the grain that we had before. So we know that we're passing this through in the right direction. And so that you know, uh, if you have to stop in your uh, process, you want to put your little arrowhead back on there. And we can continue to plane this down till we get the exact width that we want with our calipers. In this instance, we're now going to turn it this way and plane this surface and this surface so that we have a four-sided spar that is perfectly square. So in this example, we've got our nice uh, square spar. We've uh, removed all of the uh, saw marks that were created when we band sawed this uh, sample spar. So we have four uh, smooth sides using the planer. And uh, had this been you know, the exact spar that you wanted, you would have used your calipers that were preset so that you got the exact uh, width and height you wanted. Uh, in this case, it's just a practice piece. We're going to use it a little bit later on in the class. So uh, the exact height and width didn't matter. But if you were doing it for an actual airplane, you'd use your calipers and you'd make it uh, exactly to the right dimension. Now the next thing we're going to do is um, use the planer to uh, plane this smaller piece that we had cut on the bandsaw. Remember we ripped this on the bandsaw. You can clearly see the uh, bandsaw marks. And you can see my pencil mark uh, where we went. And we want to make this four-sided clean. And uh, we'll just do that and um, get ready for this will be used uh, in a future uh, lesson. Okay, so we took our piece that we cut on the bandsaw and we've run it through the planer now and we've got three quarter inch thick by one and a half and we're going to use this later on in the class. So now we've demonstrated to use the planer to cut to a specific dimension and uh, showing using the calipers and marking with a little arrow which way the grain is going so that you can repeatedly uh, pass your uh, piece of wood through the planer correctly. Okay, here's our um, practice spar that we just got finished planing to dimension. And what we want to do is um, 
you have to create on the cross-sectional view of your spar um, an angle. In this case, uh, for the Curtis Jenny, it's 8 degrees on the top and 2 degrees on the bottom. This is just a blow-up of the spar for you to see. And what I've done is um, I printed this out on my computer uh, at 1 to 1, which is just the size you know that we would use. Um, and I've glued it to a piece of cardboard using uh, just a spray adhesive that you can buy at the hardware store. And that gives you a nice uh, template. If you want something longer lasting, you could put it on a piece of aluminum or something. Um, so then we use this one-to-one -one, uh, model to make our guide for cutting. And this is our um, angle that we need. And then this is the guide that fit there. We cut it out with an X-Acto knife. And this is what we'll use to set up our planer. So um, we have our spar, and we've set it in some clamps. And if this was a very long spar, we'd have a long table or workbench, and we'd have multiple clamps. Um, you want the spar to be level, so we have a, a spirit level, and we make sure, you know, before we start, that the spar is level across our work surface. And also, if you, uh, you know, want to double check, we um, plane this four-side square, so you can take your machinist square.